This morning we are learning more about a semi truck crash that left the interstate blocked. The wreck on I-16 in Twiggs County closed all lanes headed into Macon into yesterday evening. The Georgia Department of Transportation says it happened just before 5 o'clock just west of Jeffersonville and Bullard Roads. That's exit 18. Twiggs County Sheriff Darren Mitchum says a semi truck tried to pass another semi when the one in the right lane had a tire blowout. The truck in the left lane left the road, went between two bridges and landed on its top in a creek. Sheriff Mitchum says it took crews hours to get him out. An air ambulance helicopter took him to a Macon hospital. Now you're actually at a greater risk for a tire blowout in these higher temperatures. This morning we're taking a closer look at how you can stay safe on the roads and care for your car in the heat. We spoke to Alan Walker at Precision Tune Auto Care in East Macon. He says the heat makes air in your tires expand, which can lead to a blowout. Uh, if you don't have the tires properly inflated, then you're gonna, your tires are causing your car to slow down, ca causing you to, your car to sway unevenly, and it's going to cause you to use more gas. And that we definitely don't want. Walker says your safest bet is preventative maintenance. Get your car checked regularly. Now, if you do experience a tire blowout while you're driving, here's what you need to do. So your first instinct might be to step on the brakes, but insurance provider Allstate and DefensiveDriving.com say don't do that. It may cause your wheels to lock up and you could lose control. Instead, accelerate slightly, then steer as straight as possible. Begin to slow down by gently removing your foot from the gas pedal. Then steer towards the right-hand lane and pull over when it's safe. Fire crews still trying to figure out what caused a fire at a chain restaurant in Milledgeville. Fire Chief William Collier says the fire at Huey McGue started just after 6 last night in the storage building behind the restaurant. Collier says some supplies and debris caught fire. The fire took about 30 minutes to put out. Thankfully, no employees or firefighters got hurt. There's no word yet on when the restaurant may reopen. This morning, $2,000 reward could be yours for information in a deadly shooting in Washington County. Sheriff Joel Cochran announced they're joining with the GBI to offer the money for information leading to the arrest and conviction of 24-year-old Brian B.J. Rozier. He's wanted in connection with the shooting deaths of two people during a music event at Larry Mitchell Ballpark in Sandersville. The sheriff says they believe someone fired around 100 shots into a crowd on May 29th. They add that Rozier should be considered armed and dangerous. Well, right now, Megan Bibb is designing the green space that will sit where a Confederate statue once stood. Crews began taking down the statue on Cotton Avenue yesterday. It's moving to Whittle Park outside of Rose Hill Cemetery. After they finish moving the bigger statue, the construction crew will focus on a smaller one on Poplar Street dedicated to the women of the Confederacy. Crews hope to finish by Friday. Well, the former Houston County bus driver convicted of killing a student in an accident should get a new trial. That's a ruling coming from the Georgia Supreme Court. They ruled yesterday in favor of Shalita Harris. Her lawyers asked for a new trial, arguing that jurors in her trial were doing their own legal research and Googling information. The state's highest court agreed that is jury misconduct. They said a lower court was wrong when the judge denied her lawyer's request for a new trial. A jury convicted Harris of killing six-year-old Arlana Haynes in a January 2018 wreck. Investigators said she hit a curve too fast. When the bus crashed, the impact partially ejected Arlana. Well, it could be a few more months before a grand jury hears testimony in a Johnson County man accused of abusing disabled children. The case got pushed back yesterday. We reported back in March that reports of abuse at David Fahey's Kings Cleft Ministry go all the way back to 2014. Now the GBI confirms investigations into the abuse were inadequate. They say they got complaints that King's Cleft owners, Kathy and David Fahey, restrained children to a bed, gave them one meal a day, and beat the children with a wooden rod. But investigators didn't follow up as they should. That's how we became involved. That's how the GBI became involved, and that's what started this off. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution spoke with GBI Director Vic Reynolds, who said his agency, quote, dropped the ball on those complaints and failed to follow through. The case came back this year with fresh complaints. On Wednesday, a Johnson County grand jury was scheduled to hear evidence in the case, but Sheriff Greg Rowland said that got pushed back until at least August now because DFACS didn't complete their report. We had a juvenile that had ran away from the facility, and it was more than one time that he ran away from this facility. The GBI director says DFACS got called to King's Cleft multiple times, but none of the children were removed until March. He said family and children's services found nothing concerning even after the teen ran away a number of times. The GBI says they began investing new investigating new complaints in January. Just a week later, Kathy Fahey died of an accidental overdose. Time is 535 in your news from across the state. Today, a Georgia man is accused of killing his mother, stepfather and cousin at a suburban Atlanta home. Cobb County police say a domestic dispute Tuesday led 37-year-old Marcus Smith to shoot and kill his mother, Janice Peaks, stepfather, Donnell Peaks, and his cousin, Cameron King. Police found Donnell and Janice Peaks dead when they got to the home. King later died at a hospital. A warrant shows all three were shot in the head. Donnell Peaks also got shot in the legs. 
Smith is charged with three counts of felony murder and aggravated assault. He is in jail without bond. We're now learning more about a Father's Day burglary at the Atlanta home of former NBA star Vince Carter. Police say someone took nearly $100,000 in cash from Carter's home. Authorities recovered two guns and over $16,000 outside the house after Sunday's burglary. Police also say they collected a fingerprint from the burglar. A Georgia father remains in prison this morning for leaving his son in a hot car, but he may not stay there long. Yesterday, the Georgia Supreme Court overturned Ross Harris's murder and cruelty convictions. It's a case we have followed for several years now. Ross Harris is no longer sentenced to life without parole after the Supreme Court overturned his murder conviction for the death of his son Cooper. Harris will remain behind bars though because he was also found guilty of sending lewd messages to an underage girl. Those convictions still stand. He was sentenced to serve 12 years in prison on those charges and has served eight. The Supreme Court says prosecutors used an extensive amount of improperly admitted evidence during Harris's trial. Now attorneys for Ross Harris are celebrating the court's decision this morning. Vindicated, but not at all surprised. It doesn't make it any less thrilling or exciting. Attorney Carlos Rodriguez says he always expected to get the verdict in Ross Harris's murder case overturned. Harris's defense team did not appeal the convictions for sending sexually explicit material to a minor. They say they were focused on arguing that Cooper's death was a tragic accident and not murder. Rodriguez says they don't know what their next steps will be. Much of that depends on whether the state decides to retry the case.